Okay, we're back for the uh, second part of the lecture in which we are going to uh, give a proof of this theorem that says the lexicographic preference uh, can't be represented by any utility function. So, how should we go about doing this proof? We clearly aren't going to be able to do it by looking at every possible real valued function on R2 plus and showing that that real valued function isn't a utility function representing the preference. So that's not a way to go. So let's see if we can come up with a strategy for how we will do the proof. And so I suggest that what we do is that we assume that the lexicographic preference is representable, take a utility function, assume we have a utility function for it, and then use that utility function. And we'll, what we'll do is we'll use it to construct a function from the reals to the rationals that is a one-to-one -one function. And that will be a contradiction, thereby establishing that the original assumption that the preference was representable by the utility function was false. So no utility function could be a representation then of the preference. Now, how is it that uh, obtaining a one-to-one -one function from the reals to the rationals is a contradiction? Well, that's because of these two theorems and their corollary. So the first theorem here says that the reals are uh, not countable. The second theorem says that every set of rationals is countable. So when we put those two together, we get this corollary that says there is no one-to-one -one function from the reals into the rationals. Now, we're going to take those two theorems and the corollary uh, for granted. We're going to take them as given. I'm not going to go through any details on those here today, although I do expect to uh, do a subsequent lecture on countability, uncountability, cardinality of sets. Uh, but we'll take those as, uh, for granted here today. We'll take those as given. And so, so what we're going to do then is we are going to uh, start, well, let's start off by drawing R2+. Plus. And so this is a copy of the real line here. And I, I want to emphasize that we're, not go we're going to be using, of course, both dimensions, but I'm going to focus a lot of attention on the, the x dimension, if you like. And in fact, I'm even going to use x and y as the components of the points or bundles in R2+, plus, instead of x1 and x2. And you'll see why it becomes a little more straightforward if we use x and y here. And so this is R2+, plus, and uh, we are going to have another copy of, of the reals over here because we're going to be uh, working with a utility function that goes from here over to here. In fact, let's even start the proof by saying, assume that some function u from r2 plus into, into r is a utility function for the lexicographic order. And so we use that symbol for the lexicographic order as we've done over here in this strategy. So assume we have a utility function here. Uh, and so uh, that means that we're going to have a function that goes from here over to here. So that's kind of an abstract picture of the utility function. And so what are we going to do now? We're going to say, we're going to define a function uh, from 
um, the reals to the reals. We're going to define, uh, in fact, we're going to end up with a function from the reals to the rationals. So what we'll do is we'll say for every element of R, and that's why I've used X here, because I want to focus on the, the real numbers along the x-axis. So for every x in R, let f of x be, and I'm going to leave that blank for now because I want to work with the geometry first to try to get a kind of figure out uh, how we're going to go about defining this function, f. So let's take an arbitrary point x, arbitrary real number, and what I want to do is I want to draw a vertical line, just like we did. Oh, I almost missed the X there. So I'm going to draw a vertical line here. So this is all the bundles, all the points uh, whose first component is X. And let's take, let's say, uh, two of these points. Let's say A and B. So A is a pair, x, y, and B is another pair, x prime, x, y prime, if you like. Okay? And so what we have is a utility function that maps from here over to here. In particular, it maps to, uh, it maps to a real number for the bundle A, and it maps to some other real number for the bundle B. And the utility number for B is bigger than the utility number for A because we know that B is strictly preferred to A uh, from what we did in the first part of the lecture where we kind of developed the intuition and geometry of the lexicographic preference. So B is strictly better than A, so U of B is strictly bigger than U of A because U is a utility function for the lexicographic preference. And so. Now here is the key idea in the proof, and that is that these two real numbers must have a rational number in between them. And so here I'm going to write R uh, in the rational numbers. And so how do I know that there is a rational number between those two real numbers. Well, for most of us, we probably already kind of realize that. Um, but in particular, here's another theorem that we're going to take for granted, and that is that the rationals are dense in the reals. The set of rationals, Q, is a, is a dense subset of the reals. And what that means for our purposes here is exactly what we said over here, that between any two real numbers, there will be a rational number. In fact, uh, between any two real numbers, there is an infinity of rational numbers. But all we need is to say that between any two real numbers, u of a and u of b, for example, there will be a rational number between them. And that we're going to define as f of x. So how did we do that? We said, we'll, for the given x, we will take two y values, we will take two bundles or points on the vertical line through x. Those two bundles or points will get different utility numbers over here the B getting a bigger than uh, utility number than the A bundle, and there will be a rational between them, and that rational will be the number f of x. So we'll say let f of x be an element of the rationals such that, um, and here I'm going to leave that blank for a moment, and we'll come back to that uh, in just a little bit when we see a, a kind of the best way to write this. Notice, by the way, that there doesn't have to actually be any bundle over here that maps uh, under the uh, utility function to this rational number. In fact, for all we know, 
all of the bundles uh, with X as the first component, all the bundles on this vertical line could all get mapped by the utility function to irrational numbers. They could all get irrational utility numbers. Um, the, the utility function uh, is not going to be continuous. We already know that, that, that um, the uh, lexicographic preference uh, is not a continuous preorder. So the rational number here doesn't have to come from any, uh, any particular bundle over here. Now, okay, so we have uh, f of x for any x. Let's take a different real number, x tilde, which is larger than the first one, and do the same thing. So uh, we know that f of x tilde is going to lie between the utility numbers uh, for two bundles here and be a rational number. So let's just do the same thing. Let's say, let's call this bundle a tilde, and let's say uh, let's take a bundle over here, B tilde, could be any two bundles, um, and so A tilde is going to get a utility number, B tilde is going to get a bigger utility number because it's a preferred, it's pref the bundle is preferred to the bundle A tilde, and again we are going to have a rational number, which we'll call r tilde, let's say, rational number, and that rational number, given the way we're defining f, that rational number will be f of x tilde. And so now the last step in the proof, and we really haven't written out the proof formally yet, but we've kind of we're really doing the proof in this geometrical way. The last step in the proof is to notice now that uh, r, the first rational number, is strictly less than u of b, and that's strictly less than u of a tilde because the bundle a tilde is to the right of the bundle b. And we know that all the bundles to the right of uh, the bundles here are strictly preferred. So I have to get a larger utility number, as we've drawn in the diagram. And u of a tilde is less than r tilde, again, by construction. We picked r tilde in such a way that it was bigger than u of a tilde and smaller than u of b tilde. So r is less than, in particular, let's say r and r tilde are different. In fact, r tilde is bigger than r, but all we really need is that r tilde and r are different. And if they're different, that means that f of x and f of x tilde are different. Two different real numbers get mapped to two different um, real numbers over here, two different rational numbers, in fact. So, indeed, uh, we get a, a function from the reals along here into the rationals. They're mapping into the reals, but they're always picking rational numbers. So we're mapping from the reals into the rationals, f maps from the reals to the rationals, and it's one-to-one -one because for any two distinct real numbers, the function f assigns distinct rational numbers. So f is a one-to-one -one function from the reals to the rationals, a contradiction, because there can't be such a function. So that's the proof. But we need to really write it down formally. We can't just rely on the, on the picture. So let's finish the written description of the proof. And so we're going to let f of x be a rational number such that, um, such that f of x is rational and that it lies strictly between. And now 
we could say strictly between A and B, but the proof doesn't say what A and B are. So the easiest thing to do here, actually, is to pick out particular, particular A and B. And so let's let A be down here, and A tilde be down here, and let's let this be B tilde, and let's let this be 1, and this is 0. So now A is the bundle x0, B is the bundle x1, so this is bigger than U of x0, and it's smaller than U of x1. And then, so that's fine for uh, f of x, and then we'll say, well, let's say it a different way. Let's say if, let's say if x tilde is bigger than x, then what do we have? We have... Um, we have f of x less than u of x1, get that out of there, and that's smaller than u of x tilde 0 because x tilde is bigger than x, so the first component here is bigger than the first component here, so this has to be a larger utility number. And that's less than f of x tilde by definition of x, f of x tilde. That is, f of x tilde is bigger than u of x tilde and 0. So, again, we just repeat what we have here. In particular, f of x is unequal to f of x tilde since they uh, since x and x tilde were arbitrary we have f is one to one a contradiction and that's the proof. Simple. Once we realize how to go about it, once we kind of figure out a strategy for how to do this, then the, the trick is, of course, to exploit the density of the rational numbers in the real numbers so that we can always get a rational number between any two utility numbers over here. So. This should put you in real good stead for uh, when you see, as you surely will, when you see the lexicographic preference in your uh, first microeconomics course in your graduate program. And so uh, I think that's it for today. See you all next time.